hi guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is abiola and in today's tutorial we'll be recreating this lovely dress it is a plungy or deep cowl neckline dress with collar you've seen my inspiration and you've seen my outcome without further ado let's begin the first step is to draft our basic bodice pattern and i will start by dividing the shoulder width by two the shoulder width i'm working with is 15 inches 15 divided by two is 7.5 i'll proceed to add 0 0.5 inches to that 7.5 which gives me 8 inches you may be wondering why did you add 0 0.5 inches i added 0 0.5 inches because i want my sleeve to fall exactly at the shoulder area i mean after attaching my sleeve because of the type of sleeve we're using it looks better when it falls exactly on the shoulder that's why i added that and that's exactly what i marked okay now it's time to also create a shoulder slope but i'll first of all mark my neck width and i'm going to be working with a neck width of three inches we'll get to adjust that later but for now because of the shoulder slope we would work with three and i'll come down from that shoulder by one inch to create the shoulder slope and i would connect with my ruler from the shoulder slope to the neck width area the next step is to calculate the armhole line which is calculated by dividing your bust circumference by 6 plus 1.5 inches the bust circumference i'm working with is 39.5 inches 39.5 divided by 6 gives 6.58 then plus 1.5 inches gives 8.08 which is approximately 8.1 inches then i went ahead to mark that 8.1 inches and i wrote that into a straight line the next step is to go ahead to mark the bust point that is the shoulder to the bust and that is 11 inches then the next step is to mark the shoulder to the waist which is 17 inches then i'll proceed to add half an inch same allowance for joining the bodies to the skirt part i'll mark the same thing 11 17 and 17 and a half just to get a straight line i'll proceed to connect the point the first one i'll connect it i'll also connect the second one and the third one then i'll proceed to label the bust point bp the waistline wl and a for the allowance area okay next i'm going to measure what i have on my shoulder width area which is 8.5 i'll put that same measurement on this armhole line and mark it okay and now i'm going to go ahead to connect that into a straight line this is to create an armhole curve now in order to create the armhole curve the next step is to divide your bust circumference by four the box circumference i'm working with is 39.5 39.5 divided by four gives approximately 9.9 .9 inches i'll proceed now to mark that 9.9 .9 inches after which i'll go ahead to add 1.5 inch seam allowance the next step is to divide what i have on my armhole area by two what i have there is about 8.1 inches i would divide that by two which gives me about 4.05 which is what i marked now i would go in with my curve driller to connect from that point to the first point i marked not the extra 1.5 inch allowance i marked the first point before the allowance so i'll connect from that midpoint to the first point i marked on the armhole area and that forms the armhole curve we'll be using the same armhole curve for both the front and the back okay the waist circumference around waist i'm working with is 33.5 33.5 divided by 4 gives approximately 8.4 which is what i marked i would also go ahead to mark the same thing on the allowance line after which i will add 1.5 inch same allowance just like i did on the armhole line i would mark that on the allowance line as well as the waistline and i would use my ruler to connect from the waist to the armhole area but before i connect i'm going to go ahead to add extra one inch for that at the waist area note the front part of this dress is not going to have any that but because we're going to be using the front pattern to cut out the back pattern i am going to go ahead to add one extra inch to the waist area this is something we're going to get rid of later from the front pattern in the course of this video so now i'll proceed to add the extra one inch like i said before connecting from the waistline to the armhole area now i'm going to go ahead to cut out the front pattern before i proceed to trim this out on the back pattern i'm going to work with my most preferred neckline 
okay so here i'm going to mark 2.5 inches up and down here i am going to mark one inches and i'm going to connect from that point to this point that is the most preferred neckline for my back part i would also go ahead to adjust my shoulder slope okay then i'll place this on a fresh um, pattern paper just to cut out the back part the first thing i'll do is to mark out one inch from beginning to the end and that would serve as my zipper allowance then i'll place my front pattern on top of it and pin it down so that it stays in one place after which i'll proceed to cut it out just like you see me doing i would also proceed to cut out the neck part okay and here is what i have when i was done now i would label the back pattern the next step is to go ahead to mark my dart the nipple to nipple measurement i'll be working with is eight inches if divided by two is four which is what i marked i marked the four inches again just to get a straight line and i'll roll that into a straight line um, i'll take half inch on both sides and i would connect the length of that dart is five inches in case i did not mention okay now to get rid of zipper bulge i would need to do two things first is going up from this point by 0 0.5 inches and i'll connect from that point to the side after that i would also go inwards from the zipper allowance by 0 0.5 inches okay um after marking the 0 0.5 inches i would now connect from that point to the top of the zipper allowance using my long ruler these two things that we've just done is going to help get rid of zipper bulge and our zip is going to lay nice and flat when we wear our dress now i'll proceed to cut out in order to have the new back pattern the next step is to work on my front pattern which i'm going to use my cello tape to hold in place and the first thing i'm going to do is to go up from the waistline by three inches and i'm going to mark that i would also go towards the neckline and connect from my neck width area to that point using my curved ruler i'm going to go ahead now to divide what i have from that point to the waistline i'm going to divide it by four so three divided by four is 0 0.75 so what i'm going to do is to mark 0 0.75 in three places this is one two three i realized that i didn't mark it well so i had to go again to correct what i did initially once i'm done dividing it into four equal parts i'm going to go to the shoulder area and divide it into three equal parts then i'm going to proceed to connect from the first point to the first point on the waistline the second point the second point on the waistline and i'll proceed to divide my armhole into two equal parts the measurement is going to stop where the armhole stops and what i have there is nine inches okay that's before adding the allowance that part where the armhole stops before the addition of the allowance and what i have at that point is nine inches nine divided by two gives 4.5 i'll proceed now to mark that 4.5 and then i'll connect with my curved ruler from the midpoint of that armhole to the last point on the waistline and now i'm going to proceed to use my scissors to cut out this first part you cut it off but the others you're going to cut very close to the shoulder area but you're not going to cut through because you're going to be doing slash and spread so the aim is to cut but cut very close to the end okay now i'm going to get a fresh piece of pattern paper and i'm going to place this our front piece on top of it now i'm going to also use my cello tape to hold it in place before i begin to spread i'll go ahead now and spread the first one by two and a half inches i'll spread the second one by six inches and i'll proceed to spread the third one by 11 inches i'm sorry my head started to block what i was doing but i spread the last one by 11 inches then i went ahead to use my cello tape to hold it in place after doing that you would notice that your shoulder is a bit curved all you just need to do is to adjust the curve so that it moves in a slopey like manner just adjust the curve still maintain the curve but just adjust it properly just like i did please take note of this part i'm going to use my marker to note where my spread stopped at the waistline and at this edge after which i would connect the two points that i made from beginning to 
the end just form a straight line if it crosses over your slash and spread it doesn't matter as you can see mine crossed over then now i'm going to go ahead to measure from the top of my paper to where my shoulder stopped and what i have there is 4.5 i'll mark it for me to get a straight line i will go ahead to mark that 4.5 again i would also mark it again this is um you just have to ensure that your paper is very straight this is just for us to get a straight line okay so i'll go ahead to connect the point into the straight line i actually want after doing that i would proceed to um try to connect this line to the other line so that everything meets at a point and to ensure that it's at least a bit straight okay now the next step is to get our facing and to get the facing i am going to fold from that point which is the straight line i'm going to fold it into two and after folding i'm going to proceed to cut out just like you see me doing after cutting out guys you would notice something after the fold you would notice that this is um how the one underneath is going to look and that is your facing i'm going to go ahead to reduce this facing a little bit and after measuring i have 1.5 inches just in case you want to know how long my facing is mine is going to be 1.5 inches now let's cut the skirt part you can go ahead to mark this directly on your fabric but i didn't do that because my fabric moves around a lot and it's a little bit difficult to work with the first thing i'm going to do is to mark 0.5 inches at the top and i'm going to connect that into a straight line this 0.5 inch is what i'm going to use to join the upper bodice the next step is to mark the hip point which is 10 inches i'm going to mark 10 inches i would also mark it again just to get a straight line as usual and i would connect that into a straight line the skirt part of this dress is going to be 25 inches long so i'm going to mark that 25 inches and I would connect that into a straight line. The next step is to divide your waist circumference by 4. The waist circumference I'm working with is 33.5. 33.5 divided by 4 gives approximately 8.4, which is what I marked. After which, I will head over to add my 1.5 inch seam allowance. And I would also proceed to add 1 inch for that. Remember, our front skirt pattern is not going to have a dart, but the back will have. But since we're going to be using the front to cut out the back, it's important we add our dart to the front. The hip circumference I'm working with is 46.5 46.5 divided by 4 gives 11.6 and that is exactly what i marked i proceed to add 1.5 inch seam allowance okay i'll proceed now to connect the point with the straightest part of my curved ruler i'll proceed to measure exactly what i have on my hip line which is 13.1 inches i would mark that thing on my skirt length i'd mark that 13.1 inches on the skirt length and i'll connect the points now for you to get the ruch that you find at the skirt part you would have to add extra inches to your skirt length for me i'm going to proceed to add eight inches to that at first i wanted to add seven but i changed my mind to add eight inches so you're going to see me change my mind now i added eight, eight inches then i added extra inch for allowance which implies that i marked eight inches then nine inches as my allowance so i'm going to rule the lines now and label them okay i'll proceed to label the lines just to know what they are or what they signify on the allowance line i'm also going to mark that 13.1 inches which is exactly what i marked on the hip line and on the skirt length line and i'll connect that into a straight line at this point i'm going to go ahead to cut out and label this the front skirt pattern on a fresh pattern paper i'm going to go ahead to mark two inches from beginning to the end we're going to adjust this this is going to be a zipper allowance okay so please come along with me i will place the front cut pattern on top of it and i'm going to proceed to elongate or lengthen all the lines okay remember our zipper allowance is one inch but for this one to match with the upper bodies i'm going to mark half inch remember we took out half inch to get rid of zipper bulge on the hip line instead of marking one inch for the zip allowance i'll add 0 0.5 inch for to give space for the bumps i'm going to mark 1.5 inch i'm going to come down from that hip line by five inches and i'm going to roll that into a straight line on that line i am going to mark one inch i'll also go to the skirt length line and also mark one inch then on the extra allowance 
allowance line i would also mark one inch and i would also mark one inch on the allowance line i'm sorry that part is not showing and i'll proceed to connect all the points after connecting all the points just like you see me doing i would proceed to cut out yeah now in order to get rid of the excess fabric usually found at the tummy area i'm going to come down from the center front by half an inch and connect to the side remember we already took our half inch seam allowance so i didn't have to measure any half inch i just connected from the half inch to the side seam it's not going to affect the length of your skirt okay remember i told you guys that the front skirt and the front bodies will not be having any dart so at this point i went ahead to remove the one inch dart so what i did was just to connect from the hip line to the part where i had marked my one inch dart. i just got rid of the dart from the skirt part basically it's not something difficult and i went ahead to cut it out now i'm going to proceed to mark my dart the nipple to nipple measurement divided by two is four so um, the length of the dart is five i took half inch on both sides and i connected that please anticipate the next tutorial which will be the stitching tutorial i'll see you in the next one bye